Uh, Russell, since we played the David Sullivan interview, uh, it's getting picked up everywhere, and now other news outlets are, are running the story that Declan is set to leave West Ham. Uh, Sullivan was telling us this morning they expect big offers to come in uh, as of this moment onwards. And you would say, Russell, probably on behalf of other West Ham fans, thanks for what you've done, Declan. In, in an ideal world, you'd like him to go into next season, but it certainly doesn't look as if that's going to happen now. Apparently not. It seems like momentum is accruing. It's surprising, I suppose, that on one heart... Is, then, are you saying that what Declan Rice is doing is just being diplomatic and good-hearted and kind? Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, there's very little chance. that I mean, Declan Rice didn't turn down £200,000 a week, so he could sign, stay with West Ham for another two years, did he? So if David Sullivan's logic uh, is to be followed, right, right. that... that uh, David was so desperate for him to have that extra £10 million, but, but Declan turned it down because he just wanted to play for West Ham for a fraction of that money. Mm. All roads lead to this particular Damascus, doesn't it? They're going to be a door exiting left stage for Declan Rice. Yeah. And it will all be about how much money. And if David thinks he's going to get £125 million for Declan Rice, I think he, he needs to rethink that because I don't think that market is there for Declan. I think it will be sub one hundred. Well, even if it is, <gasps> even Much if it is, I mean, fans now because they're all massive today. Is Jude Bellingham? <laughs> is Jude Bellingham to Real Madrid for what 80, 90, 86 million? That's a good indicator, isn't it? Well, Real Madrid is one thing, and English Premier League clubs are another. So, Real Madrid's track record of paying ninety million for Eden Hazard and other mm. players that they've bought has not necessarily, necessarily served them that well. But I think it's it's a fool's errand to suggest that whoever's buying Declan Rice in England would do necessarily what Real Madrid do. Yeah. Did you ever think in your wildest dreams, Russell, footballers would earn what they earn? This fella, quite rightly, says there's got to be a ceiling, but now the Saudis are in town. Benzema's getting 200 million a season. I suppose it's difficult and perhaps unfair to focus regulation in particular on the wages of the players. Why not... Why is that because I suppose it's one of the areas where people from a normal background can emerge into glory, wealth and stardom. Not that those are the only things to achieve. If you're looking at regulation, why not if regulate... It's harming, if it's harming the overall economic structure of the game, I don't, I'm then not... you're in the territory where the argument is relatively futile. Simon, I'm not querying the idea that, that corporatisation and commercialisation has harmed the sport. It plainly has. It plainly has. Everywhere you look at it, sort of corruption, hypocrisy... But you know, and it's turned it into an entertaining global product. But I think that yep. we can see the way that it's going. It's you know, with the uh, the emerging preeminence of the MLS with this messy move, the Saudi Arabia gear. It, what seems it, to me, if you're going to regulate it, why regulate it at the end where it's the players? Why not regulate the institutions? Why not insta Why not regulate what, what, the finance what, what, behind what, what, it? What, what does that achieve, Russell? What, what are you aiming at? You're aiming at your sort of ranting. Well, at what the are you aiming at? Why do you I, want I, to stop the players no, earning the money? I want to I want to have some reasonable level of return inside the game so the economic sustainability of the game isn't jeopardised. Now, we already know, that if, when we're talking about regulating the players, I'm not suggesting we send them to the poorhouse and send them back to Bob Lord working down in Burnley because he was a land baron once. They'd be like, <laughs> ship has sailed, mate. They're already... They're already <laughs> well, I, what about when, like, you used to be get, players on the tube eating fish and chips yeah, in 1986? Yeah, well, you know, this isn't Johnny Haynes. <laughs> Julian yeah, Dix yeah, yeah. used to arrive up yeah. to park on an horse! We don't, <laughs> we, don't, we don't need Jimmy Hill out campaigning for the maximum wage or minimum wage. But the point is, no the excuse. Point, the point is this. Horse is that we're at a point where the player salaries are But why, just... are, you, why are you singling out the players? I know well, why. Because you're a former right. owner, okay, Simon. Okay, and I think it should be the ownership up. models. There Look at the ownership models. Why not have partial fan ownership? Yep. What about restricting that? And what, like, in the price... Well, it already is restricted. If you're yeah. talking about it, it's not enough. It's restricted by the nature of the fact they don't have any money to put in football clubs. It, what seems to me... Like, if you're saying that the, the requirement for regulation is in order to support, like, the grassroots Governance. of the game... Governance. Controls, uh, better controls. Yeah, but what is the purpose of the control? You don't want control for control's sake. So We've experienced football, enough so, of that in so, the last so few so years, haven't we? football clubs are sustainable and not sustainable yeah, by individual whims. Do, do we really want individuals, I'm a case in point, that, <laughs> that run out of money after spending 50 million quid and the football club becomes in jeopardy as a result of it? Do we really want nation states that have different agendas setting the passage and the tone for every other aspect of football? Yeah, absolutely not. not really. But why are you saying that the focus ought be on the earnings of players because rather than... Because that's where all the money goes. 
No, what do you really think so? I don't think no, the money would head in. So it's a no, fact. Simon, I absolutely refute that point. There's no way that the players earning that money is the destination of this endeavour. There's no way that Saudi Arabia are like, um, how can we make Declan Rice richer or the players that, or, or Abu Dhabi? How can we make working class English kids richer? That's not the endeavour. It's a no, corporate globalist greenwash sport wash no, endeavour. No, but, but by definition, we're talking. So that's what you got to cap. That's about, what you got to curtail. Well, well you, no, no, not really. Yeah. Not really. We're talking about the, the nature of the game and how it's structured currently. And the main beneficiaries of it, it's not me sat here like some demented Grinch saying the players shouldn't get this and they shouldn't get that. Because you can run that argument with movie stars like yourself that get paid far Oi. too much money or go on platforms like Rumble and Watch get paid out. far too much money for what you're doing Every there. Every day, 5pm, Rumble. The fact of the matter is, Russell, if these players, Benzema, Ronaldo and the rest... And Golo Kante is the latest recruit mm. out there, Simon. If they're going to be offered shed loads of money... Mm. It's very difficult to say no to it. As, as, as Simon just alluded to there, you've been very successful, mate. You, you've no doubt been offered parts of it along the way. You can't say no, or can you? No, you can. You can do what you want, can you? You can say you can say no if you want. There are people that make decisions based on reasons other than finance all across the world, and usually we admire them and respect them, don't they we? They're though, aren't they? Yeah, that's because we live in an immersive and seductive system, I would argue. I think most people's lives are dominated by finance, even if you talk about a lot of yeah. money or very little very money. True. I mean, where do you all? say, where do you draw the line in terms of moral value? I mean, if you were asked to do a show in Riyadh tomorrow in Saudi Arabia, would you do it? And who gets to draw this line? No, tom tomorrow, after doing talk sport today, oh, I'd struggle. <laughs> I'd struggle to get out there. Would you do a show in Saudi? I, I'd. Well, do you know what? When you start analysing this stuff, right? You remember during the World Cup, you lot, I thought, spoke very lucidly and uh, articulately on the subject. You know, oh, you shouldn't go Qatar. They've done X, Y, Z. Well, what, really? I didn't say that, though. I know you didn't. You offered the counter argument, Simon. I'm, I'm well aware of that, mate. Like, and, and, like, um, and the pundits that spoke out against Qatar and human rights, but went because nevertheless. Aren't they? So, like, and, and in a sense, it's an impossible argument to make because if you look at our own Premier League and indeed our own history, in the end, it becomes complicated. Indeed. You can't ban... Nuan the, nuanced. It, it's certainly nuanced and it's complicated. If you start talking about, oh, take the ships out of the Manchester badges because of the potential connotations, well, should we have a little chat about the royal family? <laughs> like, if you're talking about symbols that represent inequality and represent power, and I'm certainly not advancing that argument, neither of them. I'm just saying that yeah. we should have conversations about power and money and how things are what ultimately it determines your, the direction of an endeavour this, this argument insofar as it's an argument that has any coherency to it <laughs> you're, you're saying watch out Jordan you're I saying take that, that the, 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 my that. observation about players getting paid too much money and needing a bit of control and governance in every aspect of sport whether it's the amount of money comes into sport whether it's the amount of whether the owners that have an appropriate methodology or mentality or reasons for being there in the first place should all be interrogated alongside the players and the remuneration levels, because we're getting to a stage now where there's sustainable... In any other business, whether it's selling Coca-Cola or, 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 or any other business, you don't have a collective responsibility. You just market your product and you sell it for whatever you want and you pay the marketing costs and advertising costs you want to do. In football, everything you do, the one space in life where drip-down economics actually does work is football, because football's wages at the very top affect football's wages at the bottom. Mm. And the driving factor for which is making football struggle economically is player salaries, and it needs to be addressed. I just think it's curious that you've identified that as the primary issue. Because, because it's taking 90% of the air out of the room, and that's a fact. I would say, but I, I think that's that you're... A fact. I think it's the not wrong sentiment, target, not Russell, Simon. Not, not, Russell, not a sentiment. We don't, I'm not talking we, about sentimentality either. We're living in a lot of emotions. We're what is it? Right, all right, let's, let's move on to some new facts, Simon. You know we're coming up to a what, break in a second. What precisely is it that you're trying to address. If the problem is the commodification of football, all right, sustainability, then what do you think is having the biggest impact or potentially negative impact on smaller clubs, non-league clubs, clubs throughout the divisions? Is it player unfair, wages uh, or is it the ownership models? Is it the unfair lack of representation? Unfair distribution. Unfair distribution. Unfair distribution. Unfair distribution. Right, so redistribution takes re the re governance. requirement for regulation there, mate. Ain't all about the players. It's about ownership models. I think you're aiming but, but at individuals where it could be aimed at culture. You don't put governance in. You don't put governance in all that money that drips down for better distributions will I'm go back into players. I'm interested to hear that you believe in regulation in this arena, and I wonder if you believe Governance. in regulation. Russell, no, I've got to tell you, they're synonyms, Simon. We are so glad you're with us, and what is proving to be a very busy morning. We spoke exclusively to David Sullivan, who was telling us that Declan Rice is more than certain to be out of the football club and playing elsewhere next season. Jim White and Simon Jordan, Monday to Friday mornings from ten. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.